About a year this time in 2021, full prices of the pumps in Ghana sold at an average of 5 Ghana CD per litre. As of today, March 2022, the prices have doubled. This season of price spike is not only exclusive to Ghana, but the world at large. Why is this the case? And is there a way out? What has the National Petroleum Authority, being the regulator, got to say? Welcome to Energy Quest. So Abbas, you're just the perfect person I was hoping to meet today. As you well know, the prices are skyrocketing. Everybody is trying to make sense of it, trying to understand why we are in this situation. But since you are the king of price with the regulator, I'm sure I'm sure you are perfectly the one, the one to speak on it. So explain to us. My viewers want to know why are prices skyrocketing on the market? Okay, so we are seeing increases in the price of petroleum products in Ghana because the prices on the world market are going up. Okay. Um, the price of fuel in Ghana is determined by three key components. Okay. The first being the world market price, and then um, the taxes and levies that we add to the prices here in Ghana, and then margins. But aside this, the exchange rate also plays a key factor. The margins by the, um, the service the importers, providers? Yes, okay, the service okay. providers. That's the importers and then distributors as well. That's the oil marketing companies. So their margins also are there, in addition to the taxes and levies, as I've mentioned. Oh, okay. But then the okay. exchange rate also plays a key factor. Mm -hmm. So in Ghana, because the prices of petroleum products has been deregulated. Yeah. What we mean by deregulated is that the government does not control the prices of petroleum products any longer. Mm -hmm. So the changes of petroleum products on the world market and the changes in the Ghana city's performance against the dollar yeah. will directly affect the price of fuel at the pump. Okay. So okay. recently we've seen that uh, on the global scene, prices have been skyrocketing. Before this Russia-Ukraine situation came yeah. in to escalate the problem, we had a situation where prices were already projected to go up this year. And it's mainly on the back of the, uh, the fact that supply is not rising as fast as demand is rising. You remember that two years ago, that was 2020, when the COVID-19 pandemic hit. Yeah, there were the lockdowns crash. all over the world and um, countries, uh, because of the, the way to control the spread of COVID-19, mm -hmm. there were lockdowns, movements were restricted. This affected the demand for oil. Okay. So with the way the oil market operates, if the demand is very low, it means there will be so much supply on the market Excess. and then prices will fall, basic economics. So we saw prices really falling down in 2020. Yeah. Now, after a while, economies have begin, began to open up. So starting from January 2021 in particular, mm -hmm. we realized that because the economies began to open up, business the movements they began to increase. Demand for petroleum products started rising again. Okay. And this led to the increase in the price of petroleum products. Okay. Demand was not, uh, supply, supply was not catching up with, with demand. demand. Already, we also are aware that the OPEC Plus Group, that was the organization of petroleum exporting countries, in addition to Russia, Russia joined them to form OPEC yeah. Plus. Um, they also reduced their supply for some time. For what reason? So, the, the reason is that prices fell to a certain level that, you know, because of the, the, they depend heavily on the oil production in these countries. When prices fall, it affects their revenue generation and the fact that they, they are not able to manage the economies well. Yeah. So in 2021, when demand began to rise, what, and there was pressure on them to increase their supply. So what they agreed to do was that they were going to increase their monthly supply by 400,000 barrels per day. Indeed, they started this last year, but it has not been enough to meet the demand. Oh, the, the world market. needs even more. No, than we need that. even more. So they, they have not increased the uh, supply beyond the 400,000 they promised to do. Unfortunately, the Ukraine-Russia situation came to add to that. The and if you notice that, even though prices were rising, have been, have been rising from last year, from last just about a month ago to mm -hmm. now, the escalation has been serious. And that's why we've seen the increases in the price of petroleum products steeply just uh, over the recent few Okay, years. But, but you know that um, among the uh, various aspects that affect our price in here, some of, the, some of the ones you mentioned can be controlled, and if not. So um, if you look at let me mention them again. You have the world price, you have no control over it. You have the exchange rate, you have no control over it. Mm -hmm. The cost of importing and supplying the products, these are costs that have to meet the supply cost. So assuming you are an importer and the, the cost of landing the product or the cost of distributing the product, 
you are not um, what is added to the world market price is not enough. It means you cannot supply. Yeah. So you don't really have control over this. Mm -hmm. um, the taxes and the levies and the margins are what are added to by government. Um, Which government can control? So um, mind you, the pricing formula we have for Ghana gives governments opportunity to raise revenue from petroleum prices. Yeah. So if government imposes petroleum taxes or on, uh, on petroleum uh, on uh, taxes on petroleum products, let me put it that way. It means that they've used this to budget for the year. So even though you have they have control over it, um, I think just in the middle of the year, if you ask the government to just take off a tax, it oh, means it's going the situation to situation we are in, the extent to which the world prices are going, don't you think there's a time that, irrespective of budgeting plans, government should consider to ease up the economy a bit? Because um, even compared to the sub-region, Ghana seems to have a lot of taxes on the fuel, okay, comparatively. So the various levies in there, there should be some aspects where we can massage a bit or take off completely during the period. Okay, so indeed, um, indeed, if you remove taxes for petroleum products, not completely. Adds, I mean, uh, in it, in it, even if you remove one peso, it will add to something. Okay, yeah. so this is a call that several stakeholders have made to government. As MPA, the regulator of the uh, petroleum downstream industry, the mandate to impose taxes or remove taxes or reduce them is not something that sits with us. Yeah. So these calls, I believe, government has heard them. But like I said, the reven taxes generate revenue for government. So I think it is uh, up to government to analyze the situation, look at what they are making from petroleum taxes, and see if they can remove any of them and be able to uh, relieve, the uh, relieve the consumer. But you, uh, you know, so the MPA regulates the industry and understands the business of the industry well. The MP MPA understands the pricing regime, everything perfect because it comes from the exporters. Okay, so I think the MPA can even be in the position to rally on this and even push the government that, look, this is the true situation of the companies and the industry, and that is how come the consumers also suffer. So can the MPA be in the lead in doing this, in pushing for it? So indeed, I think you have to also look at what MPA's mandate is. MPA's mandate is to regulate the industry and make sure it is operating effect efficiently and effectively. When it comes to pricing of petroleum products, our mandate is to ensure that the prescribed petroleum pricing formula is being applied appropriately yeah. by whether the importer or the distributor. Government itself, I'm sure, understands the implication of petroleum prices on the economy. Of course. And it is the Ministry of Finance that determines how the economic management of the country is handled. So MPS definitely understands these economic implications, but the Ministry of Finance understands them even better. So any call that is made to government to remove taxes mm -hmm. from petroleum products, I believe the Ministry understands them very well. Yeah. MPA um, can make recommendations, yeah. but these recommendations, at the end of the day, the final decision will have to be made by the Ministry of Finance. Uh, and uh, if they agree that something should be done, they will recommend to government and then they go back to parliament and then parliament anyway, will amend I, the taxes. I hope they do agree. Yes. Seeing that everybody is crying and demanding that support, I, I hope they do agree. So, but so I, in I the role MPA plays, you, re you realize that in November 2021 and December 2021 and even January 2022, the price stabilization recovery levy, for example, was, was removed. Up. Yes, if yes, you read yes, the yes. act that introduced the price stabilization recovery levy, for example, it states clearly what it should be used for. One is that it should be used to stabilize prices for consumers. Mm -hmm. And the other is that it's supposed to be used to pay for the subsidies on residual fuel oil, which the fishermen use, the canoe fishermen use. And then the residual, sorry, the premix fuel, the premix, which the, yes, premix yes, fuel, yes, which yes. the canoe fishermen use, mm -hmm. and the residual fuel oil, which the industry uses for manufacturing. Yeah. So looking at how the price were rising at the time, we recommended to government that we can, because Let's the access, you can use it to cushion the consumer take it off for a bit so that the consumer does not pay the levy. And you, okay. you remember that government heeded to that uh, recommendation and it was done. But because it cannot be out forever, because if you do that, we are not yet you, out of the woods. it means you will not be so, able to pay for the subsidy on premix for a residual for oil. No, Mind that, you, the that, supplier... That, that, that's true, but you see, once the, the world price was still going up, I didn't think it was it was time to bring it back into the price build-up. So not bringing it back means that the revenue you need to pay for the subsidies on premix for and residual for oil will also be absent. Be affected. So if we are a supplier of premix for and residual for oil, then you'll be worried. Because it means that the source of funds to pay my subsidies. Yeah. Mind you, premix for is currently subsidized by over 80%. Wow. The CBR4 is subsidized by over 70%. It means that if you supply, for example, premix for the price should be one CD, you are only getting 20% 20 20 of the price today. 20% of the price today. Waiting to be paid, you are waiting the remaining to be paid 80 pesos later. So if there's no source of funds to pay for that, it means you as a supplier, you wait forever. But why not balance it and reduce the subsidy? So that is something that, that at the end of the day also is a policy issue government has to decide. Remember that 
Like I said, MP has to do what government has advised us to do. Yeah. So the decision to subsidize premix fuel and the solar fuel is a policy decision by the government linked to economic factors. Mm -hmm. Remember that in July 2015, when the price regulation policy was implemented, government decided to remove all the subsidies on oh, petrol and diesel and they left yeah. premix fuel and solar fuel oil. Because, because the government considers the them as social, because of the people that use it. So this is a policy decision that no. government takes. I, no, I know. I'm not saying that we should scrap it completely, but maybe just reduce the kind of subsidies that go there so everybody can have a share of the national cake. It doesn't only go to that sector only. Indeed, yes, these recommendations, so. are, like I said, these recommendations have been made and government hears them. Um, so if we take residual for oil, for example, the government has approved that the, 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 the subsidy level should be should, this should come down because Good. prices continue to go up. So if you look at uh, the pricing of residual for oil, for example, from the first window of February 2022, uh, it's been increased. It's been increased gradually to reduce the level of subsidy on it okay. because okay. prices are going up. So this is, these are things I, that government that's, 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 that's and measures have one. been have been taken. So there are discussions okay. that are ongoing around these things. At any point in time, based on what the factors are, the economic factors are policy decisions are revised. So okay. discussions okay. are ongoing. Okay, that, that sounds good. Okay, so you generally explained what makes up price, but let my viewers understand properly. How is the price at the pump determined? How do, they, how do we come about that price we see at the pump? Okay, so first of all, there's a formula, mm -hmm. and the formula will take into consideration the world market price. So the importer, which is the world uh, distribution company, the BDCs. Will, will import the product and it's based on the world market price. So what we have what we call the FOB price, the free on, free board. on board. So the FOB price, the world market price, which is published by price assessment companies, and they publish this, the price change on a daily basis as they are traded. So they will take the world market price, MPA publishes something we call the daily price indicators. Mm -hmm. These daily price indicators shows you the FOB price that are used for each pricing window. So for example, if you take the first pricing window for March 2022, the FOB price that was used was based on the world market price, that's the FOB market prices, okay. from the 12th of February to the 26th of February. The average for that period is what is used so to determine applied. the price for the first window of March. Mm -hmm. For the second window of March, which starts from the 16th of March to the 31st of March, the world market price was... That's the sales FOB, window. The sales so we window. have the pricing window and the sales yes. window. So yeah. then we look at the world market prices from the 27th of February to the 11th of March. Yeah. And that average is what will be used to determine the prices for the for 16th the of March window. to the 31st of March. So the importer, which is the BDC, will look at this average and then add his cost of landing the product here in Ghana. So you are definitely going to bring the product from somewhere. There has to be freight cost. When a product lands in Ghana, you have to pay for discharge fees. Yes, so you use a facility to discharge fees. the fees, storage fees, financing costs, several fees that add up to what we call the supplier's premium. Okay. So when you add the supplier's premium to the world market price, that's the FOB price, you have what we call the ex refinery price. It is this price that the oil market, BDC will sell to the oil marketing company yeah. at. Now, this FOB price as a world market price is in dollars per metric ton. Mm -hmm. And the cost of the freight and all of that are denominated in dollars per metric ton. Yeah. So we have to convert them to CDs per liter. So that is where the exchange rate comes in. Mm -hmm. So you have to now convert the price from dollars to CDs. So if your exchange rate is not stable, then that also plays a factor there. A big so one. the importer will set its price based on this formula. Now, the oil marketing company now buys from the importer at the extra refining price, which I've explained how we arrive at. Yeah. And then the formula says that taxes, levies, and margins are added to the extra refining price to arrive at what we call the ex pump price. The ex pump price is the price you pay for four at the pump. Yeah. So if the extra refining price is, let's say, two CDs, and we have taxes, levies, and margins adding up to, let's say, one Another CD, one CD. You add up to the extra refining price, and you have your ex pump price, which is three CDs. So that is simply how the formula is determined. Yeah. In this deregulated market, what happens is that the cost, the margin that the bid is, or the cost of landing the product into, into Ghana, with the, what we call the supplier's premium, mm -hmm. is not determined by government or MPA. Yeah, that varies per So supplier. the BDC will now set its own supplier's premium mm -hmm. and add it to the world market price to arrive at its ex final price. The exchange rate that it would use to convert from dollars per metric ton to CDs per liter also is determined by the BDC based on the engagement or the rate you will get from its bank. So yeah. you see that the ex refining prices vary from company to company. So now there's competition. Of course. Now, if we take the oil marketing companies too, after they have bought the product from the BDC, Assuming two companies buy at the same price yeah. from a BDC. Now, the margins that they will add, that's the oil marketing company or the marketer margin, yeah. can vary because of competition. Mm -hmm. So they may buy at the same price two CDs, but you may decide to use an, a margin of uh, 50 pesos. I may decide to use a margin of 40 pesos. So mm -hmm. based on that, our export price will also vary. Yeah. 
Yeah. And it is for this reason that since we did price regulation from July 2015, you see that different companies have different price on the market. But Even at the refining price level, mm -hmm. you may go to the same supplier and based on your mm -hmm. negotiations or your yeah, credit terms, you may get a product at one CD, 80 pesos. I may go and buy it at two CDs because I may be buying on a longer credit term. Mm -hmm. You may be buying Maybe uh, at on, cash a, a, on or cash base. Or all. So all of this go into determining the export price and that's why we see variations in the pump yeah. prices. If we have everybody in the chain complaining, so obviously nobody is benefiting from the current situation if you critically look at it you have the importer being the bulk distributor who is now complaining a lot about um world market prices being high hitting their, their capital base they have forex issues eating them up where they are unable to mop up enough to pay for their else's in time when you go down to the omc competition is eating them you know they also having a whole, a whole lot of issues pricing at the pump okay so because this is happening the BDC would not benefit here because they could make their forex loss. There are a whole lot of issues they have. Okay. The OMC also has its own issues where uh, any attempt to make um, realistic margins pay their planning could beat them out because of competition. Okay. So if the BDC has an OMC has an issue and the consumer also had an issue here, then really how do we get everybody smiling a bit? How do we... I mean, what can MPA do to, to get us all? Because, you know, as, as prices are changing daily, salaries don't change daily. I mean, at the source of our living may, may be stable for however long. But because expenditures are going up, I know by, by this price rallying very soon, you're going to hear from commercial drivers. They're going to hear from, by everything going up, we will no more be able to fund our lives because this fuel thing will go and hit the market to money, and hits that one and hits that one. What can MPA really do for us? So um, it's good you've mentioned the importer complaining, the marketer complaining, the consumer is complaining. Corner. So this is where MPA has to make sure that our mandate, so take the BDC for example, take the OMC for example. One of the objectives of our pricing for policy is to ensure full cost recovery of investment. Okay. Now, okay. full cost recovery of investment here means that the margin that there's a, there should be a margin for the importer in the supplies premium. Yeah. There should be a margin for the marketer. Previously, before we did price regulation, MPA negotiates this or government negotiates these margins for the BDC and does the same for the marketer. So Great. they were reviewed, and also the exchange rates to use. MPA will decide what exchange rate to use because we were regulating then. There were complaints from the marketers and the BDCs that your margin is not enough or your exchange rate is not enough. But there was a margin. So, exactly, there was a margin, but because <laughs> now we were sometimes regulating there's that. No margin. So, for example, take exchange rate. You use an exchange rate today to set the price for this window. The, later, it depreciates. So, the BDCs claim because we regulate the exchange rate, you didn't give us a good exchange rate to set our price to be able to recover and I'm our not cost finding of that level of exchange so, rate. So, deregulation the was to address one of those challenges. So, now in deregulation, you, the BDC, is allowed to set a margin that helps you to recover. Mm -hmm. The marketer, you are now allowed to set a margin that helps you to recover. This is no longer determined or regulated by MPA. Yeah. So in this space of full cost recovery of investment, you are allowed as a BDC or as a marketer to set a realistic margin for yourself. That's why we set the price for every window. So what happens is that before the window starts, today is 16th of March. Before this 16th of March, the BDC knows the world market price to use to set the price for 16th to 31st March. So now he would have to look at his what supplies will work for him for the next two weeks yeah. and then add that to the world market price and also look at the exchange rate and say that I will use it. this is the exchange rate that I will use to set my extra I know we are not in normal times so, so, we, so what I'm trying to say is that you as a marketer or a BDC you are allowed to set a realistic margin for yourself so that you don't make losses yeah. so you are allowed to do that so um, what we say is that full cost recovery set a realistic margin we only come in when we think we have not set a realistic margin or we have not used a realistic exchange rate mm -hmm. so that control now lies with you the bdc and the marketer to set realistic margin so we think that they should have that space i agree with them that because of competition sometimes they struggle yeah. and they find difficult but this is where competition comes to play in the deregulated market, market it is about market. competition and what strategy you are using to stay afloat so we expect that we as a regulator will create a fair environment for everyone a, a, yeah. a fair space for everyone to operate and not have obstacles for them to operate so that they can use realistic margins to operate. So we think that for BDCs and for OMCs, they should be able to set realistic margins. Where they have challenges, where something is preventing them from setting realistic margins, we always have discussions with them and see how we can address those challenges for them to set, operate in a very fair... But is a regulator doing anything to help stabilize price, like any stabilization 
that's in, in, in the in the price the price of fuel cannot be stabilized let me say that stabilizing means i want to stop the world market price from moving no 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 no. you know just like we said from the very beginning of this conversation even though there are factors that cannot be controlled there are some factors in there that can be controlled so we so, have both so let's go to yeah. the issue of stability mm -hmm. it is impossible to stabilize a price without doing something or paying a price for it for example let's even assume that there's no tax on fuel at all there will be a, a cost for the product on the world market there will be a cost to deliver it of course. so if you add this cost together it's not something you can control and say that it should be stable forever we've no, seen oh, not stable forever per se but you know once there's a little um stability in terms of a periodic something you can plan with so that's what i'm saying so if the price of the world market is changing on a daily basis but you decide to stabilize the price it means you have to stop something from moving stabilizing the price when the, for example let's take for example if today's price is eight cities yeah. and it is based on the world market price of thousand dollars per metric ton and the world market price moves to thousand two hundred dollars per metric ton the world the export price cannot remain eight cities it means it has to go up if you decide to keep it at eight cities it means somebody will have to pay for that cost that differential it will mean subsidy yeah or it means somebody will have to make a loss mm -hmm. so somebody has to pay a price for that that's what i mean so stabilizing prices, if you look at it, realistically, it's not, it's, not, it's not possible unless somebody's paying a price. Either somebody decides to pay for the subsidy when prices have gone up by one them to stay where they are. The, the, or the, somebody, the easiest or person somebody's to, margin will have to go away. The easiest person to sacrifice, which won't be a complete, um, it's not a complete kill, would be to look at government to say, let's take a bit of the taxes off. Let's see which levies we can touch. It's not forever. It's just that, for, that brings me back to what for, I earlier for, said. For he said prepared. government. Government will have to pay for that subsidy. Or I've, I've given a scenario where assuming there was no subsidy at all, there was no tax at all in the price of the product. And the product is eight cities. If the, the world market moves to thousand two and government wants to intervene by not letting the yeah, product move the from let's say eight cities to it means you have to we'll subsidize. Be on their heads. Government has to look for money from somewhere to subsidize. Exactly. So put it in that context and understand how so this is so it's not, it's not an easy simple. decision. Yeah, so yeah, what yeah. remember that we, we moved to price regulation because of this same challenge where government was keeping prices stable for long mm -hmm, periods, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. didn't have a source of revenue to pay for those subsidies. What this led to was that there, sometimes there were shortages of petroleum products. Mm -hmm. Because government would say, I will subsidize, I will subsidize, but it was and not very paying soon for the they cannot swallow. And now the BDs were not able to pay the bankers and the importers. Mm -hmm. What will happen is that no bank will be ready to, uh, to, uh, to yes, finance yes, imports. Yes, yes. No supplier will be ready and to the give the products. Down, so the we have, to, as a regulator, our mandate them is to ensure that there's availability of petroleum products. So we will not advise on any policy that will ensure that there's, that will lead to shortage of petroleum products. So we have to, first of all, look at fair pricing okay, and make but, sure that but, there's but, but realistic can price. Can Ghana not import its, um, sorry, refine its, its own crude? So that, we get, we we get have, out of We have a refinery that can import our crude. But that can refine I the I see food. where you are going. Ghana produces crude oil. Yeah. Or crude oil is produced in Ghana. Mm -hmm. We have up upstream companies that produce this, uh, this oil. Now, let's look at the volume of crude oil Ghana produces. Um, with my checks, in 2021, on average, Ghana produced about 150,000 barrels of crude oil. This 150,000 barrels of crude oil a day, um, the state share of it is about eight, uh, 18%. 20%. Yeah, roughly average. 18%. So this leads to about 27,000 barrels a day. That's what the state owns. Now, as a country, we consume over 96,000 barrels of petroleum product equivalent a day. Now you have 27,000 barrels. <laughs> you are consuming 96, over 96,000 barrels a day. Yeah. It means we are a net importer. So even if you Still. decide to say that I'm giving all my crude for free as a country to the refinery to produce. No, not for free. I mean, I'm nobody. just making a scenario. Okay. Let's even assume that government gives out for free. It means we'll start to import the shortfall. Mind you also that giving out of crude oil uh, uh, or producing crude oil does not mean that your price for crude oil in Ghana will be different from what the world prices. Yeah. There will still be a price. Mm -hmm. What government may say is that because the revenue I make from crude oil exports, that 27,000, I'll back. I'll affect, uh, maybe subsidize petroleum products. But where you have 96,000 barrels consumption, you have 27,000 barrels supply or uh, uh, supply. Yeah, the it means that you still, have to, you still need some money from somewhere. So realistically, government cannot stop the price from moving. No, you see, what of in this case where we, we i mean the whole world is in this heat bust could have had that buffer stock that will hold us what of that crude being refined for bust to hold it as a security for the country so that means that if it's refined and it's held in the price for that may be better because you're not going to factor it in all your imports expense and everything else that came with it moreover it may be in tank for a period you know so let me say that buffer stocks work 
uh, most countries have strategic reserves, like the US, for example, they have what they call strategic reserves. So they keep some reserves in case of emergencies, then they release them onto the market. Keeping strategic reserves comes at a cost at itself, or on, on its own, because you have to buy the product and keep it there forever. So it means you need to provide the, the finances period. for that. So having a strategic reserve is not as simple as it is. As it it comes at a cost. That is one. Secondly, we have a situation where bus tanks itself are being used as uh, operating tanks. Yeah. So the products are imported, they are put in those tanks. So we don't have a situation where you can say that I've kept strategic reserves physically. Oh, but, but, but there are, so, um, so if you there, allow there are terminals me, so that if you are allow being me, used. So if you allow government. me, so we can do that. But like I said, it will come at a cost. And this is a policy decision that the government has to make and say that I have this money, I want to import the products and keep it there. And in times like this, I will, I will release it. Yeah. But we have to do the numbers and see whether our strategic reserves can even, how long will this even last us? But we have, a situation, so we have a situation, so it's, it's a security issue. So what we do is that to ensure availability of products, we keep a system where we have a minimum stock in the country at any point in time. So the bus depots, the private depots in addition, and the importers, even though government will not import the product itself physically, we always ensure that our importation program, our import program allows us to have a certain stock, minimum stock at any point in time. As we speak, we have about five weeks to last of product in Ghana, if, assuming we decide not to import any product at all, where we keep monitoring and make sure that our import products, is, the products are always coming in to ensure that we have product to last. Yeah. But in terms of its linkage to pricing, I'm saying that that alone cannot really prevent us from paying the realistic price for uh, petroleum products. It can. Coming back to the issue about where if all is produced, working for example, these things ensure availability and security of supply. Good. But price itself is a completely different issue. So security of supply and petroleum products price are two issues that we have to separate. But, but no, but they can work together. They can work together. You know, because if that security is there, we we have terminals we don't use like Mame Water, like the terminals up north that are not in active use at the moment. Can they not hold this stock just for us? So that, I mean, in periods where it's that extreme, those stocks are released to the market, then we can wait and then put it. Because in the terms of security, assuming the COVID period, we went to that extent where products could not come in anymore. We had to live, you know. Yeah, so like I said, so these things have thing the advantages. And price can yeah. be linked they have the way advantages. If, if, if we want to. They have the advantages. And I think these uh, recommendations have been made a number of times. Like I keep saying, these are not recommendations that when they are made, they are not considered. They are considered, but there are other factors that determine whether you can do that or not. Okay. Mainly, there are issues about financing. So, are you, do you have the financing to keep uh, importing? To so hold you it in there. Them. Not... Let me give you a typical example. When you bring in petroleum products and you store in tank, you cannot keep them there forever. Yeah, you have to replenish them over time. Over a period. So, let's assume that you bring in a product today at $1,000 per metric ton, and you have to replenish it in three months' time. If in three months' time, the price of the product has fallen, it means that when you release them onto the market, you make a loss. Mm -hmm. It means government will lose money. Yeah. So sometimes these factors come into uh, play. Equally, it could go up it and could government up could up. make so some money. Sometimes these, so that, that there should always be Sometimes these considerations are made, and that's why I say if, that. When if, they come, if we can hold that buffer and say that buffer will be there for six months, so instead of a 90 day, we are working 180 day LC on that, it can be there. And then, I mean, they are expecting there who know how to manage this. Yeah, so, things. I don't want to debunk so, the fact that this has an advantage. They have advantages. But, but if you link them simple. to price, I'm saying that it's not straightforward. Because, in terms of pricing, that also has a cost. So, that could be a policy to ensure availability of products. But, in terms of price, it will not stop the price from moving because it oh, could no, give no, you. No, 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 I, I didn't could, suggest that. So, I'm just putting such, it in that context but, that but what do we do to stabilize the price? It can for the still help with so, maybe we are shifting to if, an if, issue. If of, the trader. It's in there to manage it. So maybe we are shifting to it, an it issue of help. how do we ensure security of supply? No, not than exactly. How do we stabilize prices? But I want yeah. us to remain in the issue of how do we stabilize prices, mm -hmm. so that we understand that in stabilizing prices, several things come to play. Okay. So as a as as a pricing pricing expert, tell us what should what what's your prediction? Where are we going? Is it going to be better? Can we just relax? Or this is it, and it's still going to go up. So. We should just brace ourselves. What's, yeah, what, so, what's your prediction? So from when we said, like I keep telling, we work with reality, what is real on the ground and what goes into the formula. Yeah. Um, we've seen the prices rising. Sometimes we want to allay the fear of the consumer. So what we do as an MPA, as MPA is to publish what we call the daily price indicators. Yeah. These daily price indicators will show you what goes into the pricing in the window coming up next. So for example, in this current window in which we are, which is the 16th to 31st March of, uh, 31st of March, well, if you see the, uh, the, the price changes, petrol went up, Diesel mm -hmm. went up, LPG went up. Yeah. We've already started publishing the price that will go into the 1st to 15th of April pricing window. 
And you see that compared to what has been used for the first to 16, uh, 16 to 31st of March, the price has started dropping mm -hmm. based on what is happening on the world market once again. Yeah. So as a consumer, when you follow this, you see that in the first April window, if the price fall continues, it means we are likely then, to see price falls in the next window. Because mm -hmm. petroleum price, product price are such that you cannot predict what will happen tomorrow. We will keep monitoring on a daily basis and be informing mm -hmm. the consumer yeah. through the publication of the daily price so indicators. So wh wh where is it usually published? So we publish this on the MPA website. And they are on, also on MPA's Twitter page, MPA Ghana. We publish this so that consumers can see. Also on the front pages of several news, daily newspapers, we publish these things. Every day. Yeah, so that okay. consumers can yeah. be following them and see whether the world market price that will be used for the next window compared to this window, whether they are falling mm -hmm. or they are rising. Yeah. That will kind of prepare you also to know whether I should expect a price increase or a price mm -hmm. drop. We cannot predict or project what will happen. So yeah. we follow the it, it changes on a daily basis the and then let you know how the prices are looking like going forward. Okay, okay. So so what's, um, what's, what's a way forward for everybody now? With, I mean, prices where it is, with um, the regulator's position, I mean, all together. What, what? So I would say that for the regulator, our mandate is to ensure that the pricing is done in accordance with the prescribed regulation uh, pricing formula so that the consumer continues to get value for money. Yeah. So that the importer and the distributor can also Everybody recover can their investment and then yeah. provide, supply the products for us to consume. If there's no product, we will not have some to buy at all, which nope. we don't want. So we want to make sure that we are balancing our role as a regulator and then and also keeping their businesses and, alive. Exactly, and also keeping the consumer uh, getting value for money and getting the product to buy in the first place. Then if we have a chance to advise government on what we can do to cushion the consumer when they, the, when we, we, they can, they also do the assessment as a government and see yeah. what they can do to cushion the consumer. Whilst doing that, we want to ensure that uh, we want to assure the consumer that feel free, take advantage of the price regulation policy. Yeah. Prices are not the same at every filling station. Because of competition, prices vary. So one company's price may be high, but another company's price may be lower low. than that. So go to the station, confidently go, because we have, as MPA, we also ensure that the quality of products that are sold at the filling station have met the quality standards okay. for you to okay. buy freely. So don't be scared that if a company's price yes. is low... Yes, no, sometimes they worry. Yeah. And generally, beyond fuel, sometimes we think that when something is low, lower, has a lower price, then it's inferior. Exactly. So, so. but for petroleum products, they are strictly regulated. So the quality is followed. So be free. If you see any filling station operating in the open and selling products, it means that we don't have any issue with their quality. They have made the quality standard. So feel free to go there and buy your product. However, if you think that you have bought a, a product from a station and it has given you any challenge, you can go to MPA website and report to us. We'll take action. You can visit our social media pages and, and submit a complaint it. and we'll if, act if on there's them. Any adult exactly. If product. you feel that you have what, bought what, products. What about the quantity issue? So if I find a low price there, and then I buy the product and I'm unsure that um, I've, I've gotten the right quantity and all that. How, how do I report that or how do I verify that at the station? So value for money also means that you are getting the right quantity as Good. well. So first of all, every filling station, the dispensers are calibrated by the Ghana Standards Authority and they put seals on them so that the stations cannot tamper with them mm -hmm. to deliver the right quantity. Aside that, we have what we call the 10-litre can, which is at every filling station. So if you're a consumer and you feel that you have been cheated or you feel that the product Ask quantity for a 10 liter has, can. Ask for a 10 liter can and then 10 liters will be dispensed from the dispenser into the 10 liter can and it should measure 10 liters in that can. Exactly. If it's, you, they dispense 10 liters or the, the dispenser reads 10 liters on the machine and the fuel does not raise to the 10 liter, yeah. it means you have then been, cheated. been cheated. Then you'll be convinced that you've been cheated so you can report to MPA and actually be taken on that. I think the MPA is doing great. I mean, you're putting measures that should give us comfort as consumers. Because, I mean, on the pricing line, I think you're doing very well. Regulating to ensure we are getting our right quantities. I think you're doing well. And you are monitoring to ensure the quality of what we get in our tanks is equally good. And we do appreciate that. Thank you very so much. Abbas, for thanks so much for the hard work. We are grateful. And then we hope that you continue to fight for us for the right policies that will give us comfort in our pockets. Because it's very tough now. Looking at the economy and the kind of price we are paying at the pump. Thank you. You are welcome. Yeah, I hope you, you, you come on Energy Quest the next time we invite you. Hopefully, we are here to con educate and get the uh, consumers well informed. Okay. So we are ready for Okay, you. so I'll catch you at the gym again the next time. Sure. Take care. Nice meeting you. Very nice. Thank you. Right. So this is what we do on Energy Quest. We demystify the energy sector and add value. Till we meet again. Ciao.